<clears throat> hello everyone and welcome to my channel because it's probably not even a welcome back because i have like half a subscriber so if you want to go ahead and just you know while we're at it right now help a sister out and be my second subscriber maybe third or fourth i don't know but we trying to get people in here because we are just out here doing what needs to be done trying to have some fun all that good stuff but anyways today we are talking about moment of silence the last season of insecure and yes i'm sad as hell and i'm also realizing i am literally isa and isa is me like this is why representation is so important this is why isa i'm i'm ready i'm ready to see some more stuff or else it's gonna be all types of smoke okay because everything you do it hits it hits here girl i relate it is relatable and i feel it okay literally watching the episode realizing she went from the bay to la which is what i just did okay she has her whole not half whole entire college degree from stanford is that did she graduate actually i'm not a super fan so i may be i may be a little lax on the specific details but what i do know is she went to a university far more superior than mine and she is still struggling the same as me and let me let me tell y'all i'm gonna be completely honest i do ride share oh that hurts i'm like do i even want to post that to the world but this will be my testimony ah thank you lord this will be my testimony with things finally balance out for me you know but you gotta do what you gotta do like in the meantime i do life insurance but the company i'm with is a little doo doo dookie trash so i'm just i'm just as i figure out other avenues but this isn't about me this is about the episode okay but my biggest takeaway and what i really wanted to talk about was how relatable it is and it's so crazy because my grandma we were having a conversation, call your elders, call your elders. But we were talking about the Bay Area specifically or California in generally, like there is a really big crabs in a barrel kind of clickiness. And she doesn't touch on this in the, um, in the episode, but it kind of talked about, well, my grandma was talking about how HBCUs, like if you go to HBCU, you're going to be set up with internships. Like basically there's going to be a roadmap for you. Things are going to be hand, basically handed to you in regards to figuring out what you want to do, even if it's not in your field, even if you switch, pivot, decide to do something else. It's just like more opportunities for black people to strive. But, you know, Issa and myself we kind of did it to ourselves like i didn't want to take the traditional path and i do have a strong in interest in nonprofits, and i'm working to start one of my own and it's just hard and it just takes time um but definitely when you go to an hbcu she's just like think about the vice president like a lot of the successful black people you see come out of hbcus because whenever these fortune 500 companies go recruiting at berkeley who are they more than likely to choose when predominantly berkeley is you know white asian student population whereas when they go to an hbcu you know who they come in there for because who's there black people so it's just like the odds are more so in your favor when you go to an HBCU and you know that's not to say that black people because I know a lot of successful black people in California that's not to say that you know they don't have opportunities I'm just saying that you know it's probably easier or probably you know more guidance because she, my again my grandma was telling me about a situation with my cousin about how um in California when he was going to school he was actually taking more classes than he needed to. He got out, he transferred to a HBCU in Texas, and now they were just like, you could do a double major with all these classes that you've been taking. So like that's the care and concern from what my grandma tells me because I don't have a firsthand experience at HBCU. I've only been to a state college in California, um, but she was just saying there is a big difference. Um, and also like, you know, just seeing people who look like you in positions of 
success doing the things that you want to do while you're in school helps significantly because I didn't see that I only really saw it you know after the fact like after I had already been in an industry where I was the only black person you know within you know what am I trying to say like company like I was just like a one chocolate chip that was misplaced in a damn snickerdoodle okay that that's what I was in in San Francisco in the work environments that I was I, I was a misplaced chocolate chip that that's how it feels that is how it feels and again that's not what the episode is about so I'm so sorry I just I had to get that off my heart because that's where my my head where my brain went while watching it but again that's just to say you know watching Issa and it's just like you know the journey of an entrepreneur be black be it black be it whatever it is just so so many ups and downs ups and flows whatever you want to call it it's a roller coaster ride okay and sometimes you don't have to be whipping it for lyft or uber or doordash whatever it is to like really get your dream going but it is like so hard and mindset is the biggest thing mindset guidance mentorship like those are really the things that go into it and you're gonna stumble you're gonna fall you're gonna be confused i'm currently in that seeing in the show isa is currently in that okay she hasn't amassed any level of success that she's like really excited about you know it's like she had her one event like she has her company she even spoke on a panel and she's still feeling like i ain't really done that <laughs> with my life and like she's in her 30s I'm not in my 30s yet. I'm real close. I'm real close like this. You know, I'm I'm like the tortoise. You know, just going slow towards the finish line. Like I like obviously I'm trying to get there, but I ain't really trying to get there like real fast. You know, we're going to tortoise ourselves to that benchmark goal in life. But anyways, you know, even being on the panel with other people who graduated at the same time as her, and it's like you see that they are so successful and like her answers in comparison is just like made her feel like crap <laughs> because again she's not where she wants to be and I'm not where I want to be this is yesterday's makeup okay and I kind of I didn't do it on purpose but I kind of did it on purpose you know like the struggles they'd be out there they'd be out there but I'm recording um actually episode three came out last night and I'm just now watching episode one. So it's going to be a progression. Like you guys are going to see me evolve, you know. So watch the other ones to see how I get myself together today. Because um, I'm a bit of a mess. Um, but, you know, just like Issa, we're working on it. And just watching it while in Los Angeles, which I've wanted to live in Los Angeles for such a long time now. And I'm finally out here. Okay, I literally finished college, stayed in the Bay. Well, I shouldn't have stayed in the Bay, but I stayed in the Bay brought my black booty out to Los Angeles and you know we're still we're still figuring it out but we're getting we're getting a rhythm now we're getting a rhythm now and that's very important um and that was my biggest takeaway from the show um this episode but also Kelly her little little bit about you know it's just like really feeling <laughs> I'm getting emotional because it's like whew, really when you look back on your life and just like you know, Issa seeing what she has accomplished versus what she wanted to accomplish, like when she was in the mirror talking to herself and the, like her younger self was like, what happened? Where did I go wrong? And, you know, I wonder if my younger self would feel that way too. Um, and then Kelly seeing what people remember you for and being remembered for the stanky leg. And that's it. That is it. All you remember me for is a good stanky leg or being allergic to kale when I helped you with your math homework or Mandarin or when I helped you with whatever, you know, and it's just like, you know, me being the funny friend, like the funniest one out of all my friends. Like, I really don't like, I don't know. I feel like I don't have the chance to really be there for people or like people don't really come to me for certain things or don't really remember or acknowledge certain things that I do for them because I'm just seen as the funny friend. You know, I don't know if people would remember me for, you know, the community organizing that I do or defusing situations or like helping people have clarity in like situations when they're like freaking out. I don't, I don't know what it is, but you know, it's just, 
a little scary to think about like what are people going to remember me for and like for me it's like what are people going to remember me for and are they going to remember the things that I like that are worth value that I did towards them or just random things that I'm like allergic to kale or whatever it may be um so that episode really like struck me and then like honestly all the characters are speaking to me <laughs> because Molly you know how she was talking about how she was talking about what was she talking about oh how she like she would just go with the flow and how she wasn't really into the guy but time's running out like the girl's clock is ticking I have not had a boyfriend I've been asking it for the last five years and I haven't really dated in that time I have not been taken on one good date. Okay, I'm gonna do a story time on the one date that I went on in Los Angeles. And it was so ghetto. And it's just like, I'm getting close to 30. And is this what my life is really boiling down to? Is it because my edges aren't full? Like, what is the reason? Maybe it's because I do ride chair. I honestly have no business dating until I get my businesses up and running. But I do life insurance too. Okay, don't come for me. Like I got things in the pot. I just don't want to go back to a nine to five. But you know, what I'm saying is, it's kind of scary. It's just like, do I have time to waste? You know, I've listened to a little bit of Kevin Samuels and he uh, even saying his name, uh, uh, gag. I do not. Mm, 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 mm. But you know, obviously, you do have more options when you're younger. Obviously, like a woman's youth is something that is appealing to a man. And it's just like, yo, time, the clock is a ticking. The clock is ticking. Like it is, but as Isa said, it isn't. And I feel like she's going to touch more on that in other episodes. And she over here, you know, I'm just like, what if my soulmate is out there impregnating other women? And I can't, I can't, I can't. He need to hurry up and find me because I, you know, nothing wrong with blended families. But, you know, if he has not knocked anyone up, just come come on home. Come on home. Because I, I don't even want to. I've been single for too long. I've been through too many trials and tribulations in this dating scene. So can you just come without your room? Because that, that is like, that is rough. Especially, obviously, like, he's ain't trying to be stepmama. Shoot, she needs a stepmama. She's still trying to figure out her life in her 30s. Like, it's complicated. And, ah, poor Lawrence. Poor Lawrence. But we gonna see. We gonna, we gonna see. Episode 2. So, I'm going to get myself together and watch episode 2. So, go on. Because they're gonna be posted up at the same time. So, just come on. Come come with me. Come on this journey with me. Let, let's see. Let's see episode 2. And what it, what it got to give. Wait! Ooh, I look I look so rough. Oh, y'all gonna see the transformation. Maybe the next one I'll be doing my makeup. Yeah, I'll be doing my makeup. Anyways. Anyways. When old girl robbed them. Oh my gosh. The fact that she did not take Issa's shoes had me balling. I was it was the shade of it all. And it's just like if I got robbed, they probably wouldn't want to take my shoes either. <laughs> but that was funny i loved it um i'm so i'm just trying to soak in the episodes but go ahead like this video because i help me help me help help me not help me help you i would like to help you if you need help go and send me the dm i don't know what i can do for you but you know help me and i will get to the point where i can help you and others you know what i'm saying so let's go on and do that and go ahead and subscribe you know and i'm gonna see y'all later i'm gonna see y'all in like two seconds